Um, the next question is, what is needed to meet specs for solution treated and aged 7175 aluminum? So as I discussed in the in the first question, this is a a, a high strength aluminum. This is about, this is the highest one of the highest strength aluminums that we can we can get. This shows the the alloy composition, and the, the way this steel is, is is strengthened is by the formation of very very small particles within the steel. I'm mean, excuse me within the aluminum. Um, these these particles are referred to as precipitates. This shows uh, this is a micrograph showing precipitates in an aluminum copper alloy. Um, it's, uh, it's, so it's not the same composition, but the, the concept is still the same. Um, here are um, these big precipitates are on the grain boundaries of the material, um, but these really these small precipitates within the grains are really what, what's, what's giving the strengthening to the material. And here is the scale along the bottom showing the size. So 80 microns is um, point, uh, 0 0.08 uh, millimeters. So this is a this is pretty high magnification. So for um, for uh, aged seventy one seventy five the uh, this is the um, the tempers T seventy four is one of the common tempers for um, age hardened uh, seventy one seventy five and the tensile strength is is at least seventy three uh, the specification for it is at least seventy three ksi for materials up to two three inches thick. And this this um, this temper refers to a material that's been solution heat treated and then over aged, um, and that's that's the heat treating process that this receives in order to form the precipitates inside of the alloy. So the 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 heat treating process involves three steps. First is a solution treatment, which involves heating the material up to about 535 degrees Celsius, and then uh, holding it there giving it time for all of the elements to uh, go into solid solution within the material. So any particles that precipitates that may have existed prior to the solution treatment should dissolve at that temperature. And then the material has to be quenched. And the, um, and the, the important parameter here is the cooling rate. It needs to be quenched fast enough to pre prevent precipitates from forming during the cooling. And then the material is heated back up again um, to a, around 150 or 190 degrees Celsius and held there for a certain amount of time in order to, uh, for the precipitates to form. And the important process parameters are the temperature and time. Um, if the temperature is, is, is too low, or um, then it will take, it could take longer to, to reach full strength. Um, and if the temperature is too high, then it could be, um, if, if the time is the same time, then it should be for the normal temperature, then it could be overaged past its, um, past what it, the intended um, heat treatment. So if the material is not meeting specification, then, you know, possibilities are it could be a problem, one, first with, with the composition, if the composition is not meeting specification, but also if any of these Parameters are not being controlled properly, so that the um, so that the 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 proper microstructure is formed. Um, this will lead to not meeting the specification. So in this case, what I would do is evaluate the microstructure and correlate it with the tensile strength, and perhaps even evaluate the microstructure at different steps of the process in order to see is 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 each step being done properly because the different microstructures. Will uh, will be demonstrative of what uh, what's happened to the material during the heat treating process.